smell that? <coughs> Besides the pollen, but uh... It smells like clear skies out there tonight. Join me tonight in the search of a cosmic collision of epic proportions known as the Antennae Galaxies. the antennae galaxies tonight I will be imaging with my Explorer scientific 102 millimeter triplet refractor on top of an Ioptron GEM 28 mount this is a nice mount that goes perfectly with the scope here with a withstanding 28 pound payload combined I will be imaging using a ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro one shot color camera in combination with the ASI Air Plus to control my imaging train and as well as I will be guiding using the ZWL ASI 120mm monochrome camera and as well as the SV Bonnie 60mm guide scope. So the Antennae Galaxies, I haven't imaged this before because last year when I wanted to try and do this, well, I didn't really get a spring because it was nothing but clouds, nothing but rain, and just terrible weather, and winter just continued on. But this year's a little bit different. We've been having a lot more like summer-like warm 70s and even some 80s very early this time of year. But now I have a good chance of this. Now the Antennae Galaxies is a interacting galaxy located in the constellation of Corvus which is fairly low in my southern sky so this one's going to be a little bit more difficult for me than normal as it will be battling a little bit of some light pollution because it's only about 30 degrees above the horizon here now being that I live in a Bortle 5 location light pollution is not too too bad but tonight I will be using a Optolong L Pro filter with my imaging setup because I will be dealing with a little bit of some light pollution towards my south. Now usually when I'm Im imaging galaxies I'm using a Optolong UV IR cut filter because I want the entire spectrum. Now the nice thing about the Optolong L Pro is you can image in light polluted skies without losing star color. That is the main thing with some of these light pollution filters, especially if you're using like a hydrogen alpha or using some of those narrowband filters, your stars look kind of ugly. Yeah, I know, they look boring and white. But with the, at least with the L Pro, you can remain your star color and get a little bit of some hindrance away from the light pollution that is surrounding our area, which I don't really have too much here on Delmarva. I live in a Bortle 5, which isn't too, too bad. I would like to be better, but it is a lot better from a, a lot of other people that I've heard to live in Bortle 8s and Bortle 9s trying to do imaging. So that is going to be the goal tonight, and hopefully we are going to be a success. We're just going to be waiting for nightfall here, just here shortly, and I'll teach you how to go through the rundown of how to set this thing up. Later that night. Does it look like I'm a space alien? Whoosh, magic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know it's kind of hard to see me right now, but as you can see, it is finally dark out here. Now, the one thing we got to do first is we got to align our telescope with 
the celestial north pole. Now this is important because with the equatorial mount, if we don't line up our system directly with the northern pole over by Polaris, our tracking is going to be horrendous tonight. So what we have to do is we're going to be using my iPad here connecting over to my ASI Air and we're going to polar align this scope here. It's a little bit of a tedious process but it does get the job done and it takes a couple of tries. You'll see down in the corner here of everything that I'm doing with the ASI Air so we can kind of get a gander of what to expect. So first what we got to do is go into the search function and be able to go ahead and polar align. So you see right here from the preparation, what it's going to do is take a couple of images of the sky and plate solve where it is, and then it will be tell us as like a crosshair of where to move our mount itself, not the physical telescope, but the mount itself, so it points directly to celestial north. So let's go ahead and do that, take our first shot here, I do about five second uh, intervals for this, and you can see that it's solving. All right, and it's detected 111 stars. Now what's gonna happen is, this is going to then tilt 60 degrees and then take another shot of the night sky in that same area. So when it does that, it will give us a rough idea of where we are pointed in the sky. I had to turn my light off so you can actually kind of see what was going on because I don't want to blind the picture. Okay, so right now it's going to give us kind of a, a guiding direction of where to move our mount. Okay, so we're a little bit too far over on the one side. And the whole point of this is going to be that we got to get that crosshair as close as we can towards the center. The lower the number, the better the guiding is going to be and the more better the overall guiding should be tonight. There's very little wind. Atmosphere looks fairly great tonight so we should be having some really good results so we're going to speed things up as I go through the process you'll be able to see of when we get kind of close to the center here in just a moment. And there we go, we're about 36 arc seconds, which is pretty darn good. That's about good enough as you can get it at this time. But uh, we are already now polar line and ready to go. We just have to set up our plan here on our iPad and I will meet you back at the computer where we can look at it visually. All right, now that we have done our polar alignment, it is time to add our plan for our ASI Air device to start for this evening. So we're going to go into the plan option here on the software. We're going to go over to these three dots. Now we're going to add our target for tonight and we're going to be looking for NGC 4038. Correct me if I'm wrong. And there it is. There's the intended galaxies. All I have to do is double click on this to confirm. And this is where we add our imaging session for this evening. So we're going to hit the plus button. So tonight we're going to be doing light frames, 300 seconds, which is about 5 minute exposures. We're going to keep the global gain, which is about 100. And there's not really a rough estimate of how many you can do. I always just do 100. I know it's going to be more than what I'm going to need because it's going to go behind the trees before the hand. But it just keeps it so I will be able to keep on imaging until it goes behind the trees. So when that happens here, we're all set up and all we have to do is just hit this nice little button here and it will go to our target. Alright, so now that our plate solving has been completed that it found the antennae galaxy in our camera here. Next thing it's doing is calibrating the overall guiding. Now what this happens is it lifts the mount drift over and kind of gets a calibration of what, how much backlash or how much shifting it would need to do 
once we begin guiding, this process usually takes about, oh, five minutes or so, but after it is done calibrating, it immediately begins to start guiding and we are on our way to our first image. Actually, I should forget to mention too that since we do have an autofocuser, it's going to go through a autofocus routine, which basically means it takes a series of exposures and actually focuses to the stars that are surrounding it all for us. We don't have to do anything, no batten off mask. Honestly, one of the best investments ever for only $200 is the ZWL Electronic Assisted Focuser. If you got the extra cash for it, I highly recommend it because if you're like me, I hate trying to focus and especially throughout the night when the temperature changes, it will change your focus as well. Not have to go out in the middle of the night just to refocus, recenter everything where this does it automatically for you and it can do it in increments of whether the temperature begins to drop one or two degrees Celsius or over an expanded time of an hour or two, it will automatically trigger a autofocus routine so you don't have to do anything. Alright, now that we are finally done with the autofocus routine, we wait for the guiding to settle once more and then we begin our first five minute exposure of the Antennae Galaxy. Alright, well, here is our first exposure of the antennae. It's not, nothing really to bark at, but right now it is very low in the sky, so it's no surprise here, but it is a star. Guiding is a little bit, not the greatest, but it is very, very low in the sky, but it will continue to improve. And the other thing that you see over here, looks like I got a dust spot on my sensor, so... Luckily, when I go through post-processing and do like by flats and dark flats and like that, it should take care of that quite well. But later on in the night, hopefully, this will start looking a lot better. Now as we continue to wait over the next couple of hours, we will track the progress and see how things are going. Now the fun part is it's just a uh, sit back and relax because we get to let it do its thing. Next morning. Still got some fairly clear skies for the most part. So now, next point of action is going to be doing our astro flats. Well, for me to be doing astro flats, um, I just use a couple of things. I just use a plain old white t-shirt that can be used to diffuse the light. And I use this tracing tablet here that I got off of Amazon for like 20 bucks or something like that. This is the best combo I'm doing that, but in a different video I'll actually show you how to properly take Astro Flats to help with gradients as well as magnetic on your images. And just overall performs it and makes it even better. So we're going to get this all set up here and we're going to be taking some Astro Flats and we're waiting for our final image. Let me tell you, there's a lot of pollen on here. So, I'm gonna go back inside here and take these flats. I got about seven hours last night, surprisingly, on the Antenna Galaxies. And at the same time, I woke up about two o'clock in the morning and actually switched targets and went to go visit the Globular Cluster Messier 13 in the constellation Hercules. Just a little bit of some data there. So, we'll have two images to reveal for tonight. Well, I can thank everyone for watching my first video and the first exploration of this channel of Alton Astrophotography. Please do me a huge favor, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and just leave a couple of comments of what you would like to see from this channel moving forward. Thank you again, and here is the final reveal of what we imaged from last night. Always remember, hope for clear skies, and I'll see you next time.